I I bring it up because I, I, I'm assuming, like, does the Baxter family even know that she has a baby? Um, I'm just assuming that they don't. They don't because I have you know, I haven't heard anybody be like, damn, you know, I wish I could see my grandson, but Fia is isolating us. Like, there's nothing like that. Like, so, but I'm sure they'll get into it. Um, that's one of my main questions that I really just. But that's the only question I really have. Hey, what it do, folks? Another episode of Ryan Reviews Everything. And here we go again with another episode of Your Honor, episode three. Just came out. Still have some questions, but I'm still rocking with the season. It is a great show, great writers and so forth. Uh, Just a heads up, uh, this will have some spoilers in it. So if you haven't seen episode three yet, maybe you should watch it, then come back and maybe you can help answer some questions I have. So for those who have seen it, let me just, you know, jump, you know, from the jump, just go with my questions. Like, you know, last episode, I remember being kind of unsure if, if the Baxter family even knew that Fia had a child, you know, and I guess it's easy to hide a pregnancy when you're not living in the house. Like she's clearly living at the hotel. Uh, so even when you start the show, you know, you really, you know, it's easy to hide because you're not, you're out of the house. I get it. But, you know, for like certain things, like, uh, how could I put it, man? That is a quiet ninja assassin baby. All right. Like, there's one scene to where Gina, you know, just surprisingly appears at the house delivering her laundry or whatever uh, because she's isolating the family. And there is no crying from the baby whatsoever. The baby now hungry. I guess the baby is just convenient, conveniently taking naps when company is coming over. You know, so, the you know, Gina came over, you know, because she's isolating the family. And then early in the episode, we have... Um, Carlo Baxter comes over just to check in on her, make sure everything's straight. And it's just like, so I, I bring it up because I, I'm assuming, like, does the Baxter family even know that she has a baby? Um, I'm just assuming that they don't, they don't because I have, you know, I haven't heard anybody be like, damn, you know, I wish I could see my grandson, but Fia is isolating us. Like, there's nothing like that. Like, so, but I'm sure they'll get into it. Um, That's one of my main questions that I really just, that's the only question I really have. Um, But let's get into it. Um, This is, this episode pretty much covers um, Michael Desiato's first day out of jail. Um, You know, we definitely briefly see him looking at his old neighborhood. He sees the house that was once his, you know, clearly a new family has bought the house and moved in and just this happy picture, perfect family thing going on. Um, you know, and he even tries to go to to see Charlie, see Charlie Figaro. Um, but because of his past actions that led him into jail in the first place, he is apparently banned from the building. Um, now, at first, I thought it was Charlie's doing like, you know, hey, man, I, you know, you got to stay away from me. Maybe I thought Charlie knew or something like that. But uh, nevertheless, he's banned from the building. And I guess Mike Desiato was kind of confused or you know, kind of uh, demoralized in terms of like, you know, why he's he's banned. And then we have Rosie Perez's character, uh, detective, I'm uh, not detective, um, Olivia Delmont, you know, and she lets him know, like, oh, you know, you can't just go ahead and give, give your boy a heads up. Yeah, yeah, I, I got you banned from the building. Matter of fact, I got some clothes for you. I got a job for you. We got to make this cover up look good, you know, so... He has a job being uh, working at this butcher shop, local butcher shop. And the thing I did and and appreciate, it definitely showed kind of like how karma paid him back in 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 little doses. Uh, One of the people that was, you know, in his courtroom when he was a judge recognizes him. And he was like, hey, you know, uh, I, I was facing 14 years for drug possession. You gave me eight months. Um, you said good people don't deserve to go to prison. And because of that, I guess he, he gave him, I guess, maybe one, one of the easiest jobs in the uh, in the butcher shop, which is simply driving throughout the town, dropping off deliveries of, of you know, meat. So 
Uh, I thought that was kind of cool. A little small victory, I guess, for him. Um, and I think the reason why uh, overall season two of Your Honor is so great is because you just see like the complete rise and fall of this one man because he was trying to cover up this murder that his son committed. Like he literally went from judge and he's like this lowly, disheveled person, uh, you know, working out of a butcher shop now, you know. Um, I guess maybe he's so used to prison life, like he's, you know, his sister discovered that he's sleeping in the pantry instead of the bedrooms, things of that nature. So I just, just that, just that huge contrast is just amazing to watch. And this is only the second season. Um, so, so yeah, I, I really appreciate that part. Um, and speaking of Michael Desiato, we definitely see um, that his friend, his homeboy, Charlie Figaro finds out where he works and actually does end up talking to him and things of that nature and you know and <clears throat> you know it was almost like a, he didn't give him a heads up or a warning but it was almost like this small hint of like you know i felt like he wanted to say something real bad to charlie but he i guess for whatever reason didn't but he was just letting him know like hey you know the car came back up you know uh, you know it, it, there was something where he hinted about if there's anybody else that knew what happened like he was saying that Charlie still might be exposed, you know, just hinting at it. And Charlie, you know, being the, the best friend, confiding best friend was just like, you know, the one, only three people knew about it. One of them is dead. And then the other two is me and you. So I know I'm straight. And so, you know, you, you, you kind of feel sad for that situation with well, because it's like, you know, Charlie, he only did this underhanded stuff in order to watch out for uh, Mike Desiato and, you know, it's, it's just quite the quite the uh, predicament that that Olivia Delmont has put put Michael Desiato in. So that was I thought that was dope. Um, we definitely see Big Mo making moves. I thought it was so clever. I, I had no idea that that particular um, bar club, whatever you want to call it, was literally right across the street or next door from um, from the back of the hotel and. I don't know, man. I think um, last episode, yeah, I think, you know, it's a unanimous decision that anybody who's watching the show, you probably have to feel sorry for Eugene Jones the most, right? Um, but my favorite character personally is Big Mo. I love Big Mo. Uh, that actress, she's bodying that role. Uh, one thing I like about her, no matter how tense the situation is, she, uh, you, you never see her lose her cool. You know, um, but I like this episode because they kind of get, uh, you know, open up, peel back a, a small layer of uh, Big Mo's life. Uh, we definitely meet her uh, love interest, which is this attractive woman who was singing at the bar that she recently purchased with the help of uh, Charlie Figaro, you know, putting in some little peer pressure. So that, that was cool. Uh, I, I really appreciated that. And I just want to know what uh, what she has up her sleeve. You know, I, you know, now that now that you see where the location is, you know, that whole saying location, location, location. Now that we see where the location of that bar is, being that it's right across the street from the Baxters, you know, that's that that's that's the literal definition of keep your your friend, your your friends close, but your enemies closer or however that goes. Cause damn it, like, you know, they've been button heads, things have been kind of tense, but now you gotta be next door work neighbors to, to, uh, you know, to Big Mo's recently purchased club. So that's gonna be interesting. Uh, we also see like a little bit of a side mission in this episode when it comes to Lil Mo. Lil Mo makes a trip out to Houston. For one, he go ch goes, checks out, checks on uh, Eugene Jones. Um, Make sure he's staying out of trouble, which he sounds like he is for the most part, um, which is very, you know, he went through a lot of uh, traumatic events, of course, in, in this in season one. And that's still starting to show through his artwork and drawings in school, which could raise some questions. So hopefully he reels that back in um, and tries to just lay low, stay gone. Don't raise any red flags, no attention. People know you as Eugene. I mean, not Eugene. People know you as Justin. Let's stay low, stay quiet, and just pretend to be this Justin character, right? Um, but speaking of that side mission, in addition to seeing um, Eugene, 
Little Mo actually wants to buy two keys from some big time, you know, guy who pushes weight out in Houston because as we saw early in the episode, the product that uh, Big Mo's crew has apparently is bad and laced with fentanyl that's killing and overdose with folks throughout New Orleans and that can't happen, you know, and that's actually one of the conditions that Charlie said, look, this is going to be my, you know, me helping you get this club one, that's the last favor you're going to ask of me and I'm going to need you to clean up, you know, whatever's going on with your, with your drug work because we, we, I can't have dead bodies, you know, overdosing throughout the people's city as he calls it. So, <clears throat> so we'll see where that goes. Apparently there's this wide gap of a disagreement. Lil Mo only came prepared to buy two bricks. Uh, the big, the big time drug dealer was like, nah, if you want work for me, you're going to have to buy 20 off of me, you know? So we'll see what, how that goes. Um, it sounds like he's in a, between a hard, rock and a hard place. You know, you already got bad dope. The guy saying 20 is the minimum you could buy from me. So what are you going to do? I, I'm, I'm just going to make the obvious ass assumption that he will eventually just come back with enough money to buy 20 bricks or whatever. Um, but yeah, this was a dope episode, man. Um, we also see Detective Castillo, uh, you know, runs face to face with, um, uh, with Michael Desiato and she lets him know, like, yo, you lied to me, you used me, I could have helped you out. And whenever your guardian angel vanishes, you know, I'm going to be right there. So that's kind of threatening and scary. You know, this, you know, detective who was very good at her job is you know kind of has uh michael desiato in her crosshairs whenever he slips up again so yeah we'll see how that goes um and i guess the two last things that i'm going to bring up there's a lot to get into an episode i know i'm not going step by step but um i think the 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 haunting quote that really caught me in this episode is what um is what gina baxter says uh she goes back to that support group meeting um well first she, she was clearly acting like a jerk in her first meeting you know very insensitive to everybody else who lost a family member but anyway she comes back her second meeting and it's kind of twisted like she does apologize for how she acted she's talking about the whole different phases of the grieving process and then she you know plants her flag plants her flag in this one piece and says you know what i really enjoy you know i really want to stay in anger um it's something to the effect of anger is where i flourish or something like that and that's scary you know coming from the uh mafia boss's wife you know um yes you know jimmy baxter is the big bad mafia mafia boss but clearly i feel like carlo gets his anger and impatience from his mom and um for not, if nothing else it's like uh it, it seems like the wife you know is just ass or just ass or even more ruthless than than jimmy is like maybe some of the moves that jimmy um puts in motion is actually inspired by um the mindset of gina so that's kind of scary so i am very excited to see how um episode four goes uh we also see that um we really f see that uh, uh uh michael desiato realizes that he does have something to live for the episode ends beautifully when he finds out that he's a grandfather you know fia you know reveals to michael desiato that you know she has a son and she names him rocco adam baxter you know after her brother who was dead in the first place middle name is Adam, De you know, from Adam Desiato and then, you know, Baxter. So I thought that was a way to beautifully end it. Um, and that was also something that was a bit scary as well. Like this guy was trying to already trying to kill himself when he was in, in prison. So there was that one moment where he actually looked like he was flirting with the idea of hanging him, hanging himself with the belt. Um, but, you know, he definitely decided not to do so maybe the dog saved him from thinking about that when he just appeared looking all innocent whatever the case but i think the episode ended beautifully because i really you know i feel like michael desiato now realizes he has something to live for he has a grandson that you know who knows 
once he grows up could resemble his his son so um love to hate it folks that's my review if you came across this video please take a few seconds to give me a like uh or even subscribe to the channel it would do me a huge favor and hey uh until next time folks peace <laughs>